Everyone, this is Ken Rockwell live here at KenRockwell.tv. I'm going to unbox my brand new Nikon 20 millimeter f 1.8 Z lens. I've never seen it before. Let's see what's in the box. And I'm wondering how far away my camera should be from the box here. If you've got any questions or concerns, I will address them live. If you just put them in the comment section, I can see that live here as I am broadcasting. Although, to be honest, I think I'm going to uh, unbox my lens, and then I can respond to your comments. But, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. In fact, this is live television. I don't really care. This is kind of a freebie. Having worked for real in Hollywood and broadcast TV for so long, the fact that I could just do this as a live pop-up, just as a goof, nobody cares. There's no FCC, no rules. I love this. This is just too much fun. So here we go. Now, here's our box. As you can see, it's corrugated cardboard. Anything unusual here? No? Warning. California Proposition 65 sticker. Give me a break. And here are some goodies. Filled as a tote. It says it comes with a hood in the case. Made in China. Eh. You know, my concern about that is is just not, the, not only the quality, but the political aspects of it. The government of that country, the way it treats its workers, uh, not what I'd like to support. Here's important. I got this from Adorama. I've been shopping from Adorama since the 1970s when I was still in junior high school. Uh, the key is this is a USA. Yes, Nikon USA. You still need to get – if you buy from some store, don't do that because the store is probably taking your lens out and fooled around with it and then sold it to you as new. Uh, there's no such thing – well, there might be online registration, but you've got to have this paper thing here. This serial number has to match the serial on your lens. There's a lens USA limited warranty. So check all that while you can. Again, if you only use the stores, I recommend uh, they don't sell the gray market stuff. You don't have to worry. Here's the instruction sheet in numerous languages. You know, I don't know if I call this a case. It's a sack. And honestly, a used sock is thicker and easier to use than, you know, an athletic sock, a padded athletic sock. S padded athletic sock is better to use than their case. Is this a CLC1? I hope they're not calling this the CLC1. But let's see what's in our box. Again, that's what makes this fun. You guys can share along with me and save yourself having to buy this exotic lens. Ah, okay, it's all corrugated cardboard. Better protection is when it's closed cell white foam, but too bad. Okay, here's a hood. Looks like the usable disposable plastic bayonet hood. Yes, anything new here? No. Chinese hood. Echo and Chino. Uh, HB95. I never use these hoods. I leave them in the box for resell time. I use a filter to protect my lens, and if I want to keep the sunlight off of something, I just use my hand and block the light, which works better than these hoods, especially for telephoto lenses, especially for zoom lenses. I mean, ever since lens coating and zoom lenses came out, hoods don't do much, although it's being a fixed focus lens might do more. Okay, not exactly the greatest packaging. It's corrugated cardboard and some bubble wrap, but you know, it will, you know, I just use the helicopter test. If we can drop this off from a couple hundred feet out the back of a helo, uh, I don't think they would provide that, but so what? <laughs> That's not the way we're getting our stuff shipped to us. Okay, heartbreak made in China. You know, to pay good money for stuff made in China? You know, you're supporting a communist government, authoritarian government that just takes people away, their own citizens away, and just imprisons them for no particularly good reason, just to keep themselves in power. Only people who benefit in that political situation are the party members. But, you know, that's not today's discussion. We're looking at a lens here, but I do want to let you know it's not made domestically in Japan. Serial number is laser engraved. Uh, it's another one of these show showboat lenses. It's it's got a metal ring for focus. It's got a metal ring here just for trim. It does have a metal mount, but it certainly feels the front is plastic. The filter ring is plastic. The filter mount is plastic. Gee, and the, the texture here isn't even as good as it used to be on their lenses trying to simulate uh, textured uh, hammer tone or spattered or crinkle coat uh, metal. But the key is, is, as my review will show, and that's coming, at KenRockwell.com. The optics of this lens should be superb, as that's been typically what we get. Okay, I see a nine-blade diaphragm there. Pretty solid little lens. And that's it. You've got your lens, and there's really nothing more to discuss. The key is that Nikon, sadly, most of the manufacturers, because market conditions and what we buy have made most of this stuff disposable because we expect newer and better products all along. These are not made out of solid engraved, machined aluminum and aluminum and brass and stainless steel like the lenses from 50 years ago. But guess what? The lenses from 50 years ago had optics nowhere near as good as these optics. So you're getting better optics, better, sharper pictures, 
Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I guess this is what they call a case. <laughs> you know, to be honest, using that bubble wrap would be a better case, plus you could see what was in it than that case. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at your comments, and if there's anything that came through in the comments section, I will address those live about this lens. Again, this isn't a review. This is just looking at what's in the box. The full review will be up. Actually, it is up at KenRockwell.com, and you will have all my sample images, which you can download and all that, but give me a couple of weeks to do that. Rob wants another ride with this. Is this cropped on the Z50? Yes. Uh, I would, this is a total waste of time on a Z50. Used on an APS-C camera, this is a full-frame lens, becomes a 30-millimeter f1.8. So it becomes a wide normal lens, and you're completely wasting your money because a much smarter lens to use in the Z50 is a 16 to 50-millimeter zoom, which will give at least as good a quality. It won't be as fast, but it's a heck of a lot smaller and much less expensive. <laughs> Rob loves the unboxing. Okay, good. Well, I'll keep doing it then. Never uses Nikon cases. I don't know if anybody ever does. Hey, Titus. Yeah, oh, Titus Lim says he just got the AF 85 1.8 non-D for his F5. But can I recommend a Nikon lenses for landscape? Yes. Go to KenRockwell.com and just look on there and you'll see all kinds of lens recommendations. Go to Nikon. I think click on best Nikon lenses or just type that in my search box at KenRockwell.com. And I've got reviews of every Nikon lens since the 1940s there. But since you actually want a real recommendation for Nikon lenses for landscape, yeah. Now, what camera? I don't even know. T T Titus, why don't you let me know for what camera? Because the uh, F-mount lenses are a totally different series for the digital single lens reflex. I don't know what format you're on. So if you could let me know what format you're on or what camera, that'd be much more helpful than I can give you a recommendation. Rob, it's a Z6. Why are most of the Z-primes so huge? You know why, Patrick771 asks? The reason they're so oversized is, is because there's too many people who are not photographers today. Back like 30, 40 years ago when we shot on film, the only people shooting were serious people. And you didn't have people with laboratory microscopes just taking pictures of newspapers taped up on walls under a microscope and able to see the stuff that we can see today. Today, every two-year-old can go into Photoshop or whatever other program they have and look at an image at 300% magnification and see differences and defects in lenses that were never visible before. So today... They make these big lenses because there's these weenies that worry about how sharp their lenses are in completely ridiculous cases. If you want to make your lens look as bad as possible, shoot this lens at f1.8 on full frame and look at it in the farthest corner. Now, make for sure it's in focus. That's where it's going to be the softest. And today, Nikon designs these lenses so that these nut jobs are still happy with their lenses. Admittedly, if you take one of Nikon's earliest ultra-wise, like the 20 millimeter f2.8, either manual or autofocus, by today's standard, it's crummy. Shoot it at 2.8, look in the corners, it's fuzzy and dark and awful. Ditto for the 17 to 35 millimeter AFS lens, which still sells for like $1,800 in the F mount. It's awful in the corners. But we never noticed on film because the corners would be so dark, there was no automatic peripheral illumination correction. You wouldn't even see it wide open, so you didn't worry about it. But that's why these lenses are so big. The good news is they're big because the optics are just extraordinary. They're like uh, satellite grade optics, uh, the Zeiss Otis lenses and so forth. That's the level of quality we're getting here. So Nikon shows a road to make things bigger and better optically. Personally, I would like smaller and lighter, but, you know, that's just me. Oh, Titus, for your F5. Okay. The lenses to use for landscapes, I use my 28 to 300 zoom, which covers everything with stabilization on my 35 millimeter Nikons. And to add an ultra-wide lens to that, let's see, I would use a 60, I, I do use the 16 to 35 millimeter VR F4, and that's the only lenses you need for nature and landscape for your F5. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah, <laughs> great live he wants my okay i think that's about it i've got some more lenses here and i've only got so much time so i'm going to sign out here thank you very much i've got a 70 to 200 2.8 and the 24 to 200 z lens to open to titus thank you for asking thanks again for watching ken rockwell kenrockwell.com live here at kenrockwell.tv